Hey guys, welcome to Punch's Chance TV. I am delighted, so thrilled in fact, to be joined by none other than the IBF and Ring Magazine world champion in the cruiserweight division, Mr. Jai Opataya. Jai, how are you feeling? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Mate, thank you so much for jumping on. It's such a pleasure to speak to you, obviously. The last time, the last time I spoke to you was at the press conference just before the 30th of September showdown with Jordan Thompson uh, in Wembley in London. And, you know, like essentially having seen your performance against Maris Bredis and um, knowing a little bit about your background, obviously most of the UK, you know, expected a dominant performance. I don't think anyone expected the performance that you brought on September 30th, uh, fourth round knockout of uh, Jordan and... Honestly, it kind of felt like you had his number from round one. Why don't you talk us through that experience? Um, yeah, you know, I'm happy with the performance. Um, you know, I, I knew they were really underestimating my power. You know, he, the whole press conference and everything is just, oh, he's, he's going to knock me out. He's going to do this and that. It just shows, you know, the the ring like you and, and like, he wasn't really educated on who he was jumping in the ring with. You know what I mean? It's thought he was going to walk in there and sort of bully me, but you know, it didn't happen that way. So, yeah. It sure didn't. I mean, you certainly didn't look like a man that could be bullied in the ring. Uh, it was really interesting because throughout the whole of fight week, you just had this like laser focus, like absolute laser focus. And uh, you took that energy with you into the ring. It kind of felt like you got your shots off super, super early. And I feel like perhaps your experience actually had a huge part to play in that. Um, because obviously you're, you're far more experienced than Jordan is. Um, in terms of obviously, you know, the mindset going into a fight like that, coming across, you know, enemy lines, so to speak, does that impact you in any way? Um. You know, it's just fuel on the fire, really. You know what I mean? We, no, no matter what, who I fight or where it is, we always train hard. We, we're always in the trenches. You know what I mean? The, that's, that's something I really pride myself on is, is the work ethic we put in the gym. So it doesn't matter where or when, we're, we're always ready. Mm. I mean, we spoke a little bit about it's really important for you to kind of showcase like Australian boxing and with the view of bringing it back actually to Australia, because it's something that, um, you know, isn't huge over there uh, for you to have to come over to the UK really to um, defend your titles like that, for example, that is an example of that. So do you feel that, that a performance like that has put you in good stead to do that? Um, yeah, definitely. I, I feel like that, that performance has put me in a good position to do anything I really wanted at the moment, you know what I mean? Um and and it's really stamped to who who I am and and we mean business. You know, they they sort of looked at me with the breeders fight and I could tell, you know, that it was a lot of people thought it was a one off thing and just the way I won it was just you know, but coming over there and making that statement, it, it's it's pretty satisfying. And especially the way the whole fight night sort of panned out with you know, because I definitely feel like a lot of people were praying on my downfall there. You know what I mean? The, it, it was a Jordan Thompson fight night and, you know, we we had to earn it. So that's what we did. Oh, you you most certainly did earn it. Um, I just remember being, actually, I think at that point I'd gone to see some friends up in the stands and, you know, no one really knew what to expect. We just watched the Chef Clark fight against Vassal Dukar. Um, which had, you know, had gone, it gone some rounds. So it was like, okay, what do we expect here? Obviously, Jordan had a huge amount of height and range advantage, um, but you know, you kind of smothered his work and kind of got in, got inside and and did the business. Um, and I just remember myself and my friends, we were up on our feet. You know, it was such an exciting fight, just as a fan, just purely as a fan. It was such an exciting fight to watch, um, and I feel like you, you, you kind of are in a lot of exciting fights, Joe. Well, man, we, we train hard, like I said, you know, I pride myself on training hard and we're, we're just ready for anything that happens in that ring. You know, anywhere that fight goes, we're, we're prepared. 
we, we train in deep waters every day. So, you know, he, he wanted, I, I said it before the fight, you know, he, if he wanted to box out long, I can do that. If he wanted to come in and brawl, I can do that. And, um, you know, I, I was just ready, you know, and I, I don't think he understood the level that he was stepping up to. He, he, he sort of underestimated me, but, um, you know, that's what happens. He, I'm sure he's learned from the process. For sure, for sure. I feel like every loss has a learning attached to it um, in any respect. Why don't you talk us a little bit through, you know, fight night itself. How was it kind of arriving at the venue? Did everything go smoothly for you? How was the warming up um, in the changing rooms, etc.? cetera? Um, yeah, you know, it, it was good. When I, when I rocked up, you know, I was probably more nervous. The lead, like the whole all the interviews and all the all the press conference and all, all that all that build up and all that talking you know it's just like like I just that's not what I do you know what I mean but when I got to the change room and when I started warming up and doing pads I was like oh, finally you know finally we're here and it just and then another it just come out you know what I mean that that that's that's why I'm here I'm here to fight you know I'm not here to do all these stare off and, and talk shit and try and sell a fight. My skills sell the fight. My hard work sells the fight. So it was honestly a relief like that I was in that change room and it was the it was honestly walking out like I'm meant to be here. And um, you know, it felt good. So I knew I knew that I knew these stadium fights were coming, you know, I knew I knew these world title fights were coming. So it's just a relief that they're finally here and and, and it, and I'm so happy that I finished the fight and I'm injury free, so I get to just keep the ball rolling because I've had a bad track record with, you know, injuries and and um, surgeries and stuff like that. So, you know, it's all positive, and I, and I'm honestly just looking forward. I can't wait for the next one. That's so that's so fantastic to hear. You know that you could just like step into your zone from the moment that you arrive at the venue. Um, for those that don't know, obviously, Jai broke his jaw in two places in his last fight against Maris Bradis. Uh, which in itself is just like, you know, for for a regular person, it's just it's quite insane to hear about. Um, but yeah, thank thankfully you're injury free and can keep it rolling. So in terms of that process, where are you looking to? Because obviously, I don't know if you saw. I'm, I'm I, I assume that you have. But Chris Willem Smith, you he, another UK fighter, uh, cruiserweight champ in the UK, has uh, already. You know, he went straight on online to talk about calling you out, being like, he wants to unify. Uh, what do you think of that? Perfect. Let's go. <laughs> I want that WBO around my waist. Perfect. Let's go. <laughs> Next week, whenever he's ready. I just love this energy. It's so, do you know what? Cruiserweight, the Cruiserweight division is one of my favourites because I find it so exciting. Um, you know, is there a potential of the Maris Bredis rematch? There is, um, you know, I, I think the IBF might be demanding the the Bradis rematch, but you know whether he takes the fight is another thing. You know, uh, who knows who knows what's going to happen. To be honest, my, uh, my track record with you know what what we think is happening and what actually happens is a two completely different things. So I've learned not to sort of focus too much on what's going to happen next, but just be ready for whatever does. You know what I mean? So. Whether whether it's greatest, whether it's you know Chris Bill Smith, I'll, I'll be ready. And um, but I, I really do hope that my next fight is a unification fight because you know I, I've I've fought greatest, I've been there, I've done that, and and I honestly believe if I fight him again, I beat him even better. But um, you know I, I just really want to fight for more belts. Do you feel like the boxing community has been sleeping on you? Um. That, yeah, I, I feel like, but it's it's like I, I've had the one fight with Bradis, you know what I mean? It's, I haven't really showed them. And I feel like I, I'm, that my last fight I showed them more, but I've still got a lot more to show, you know? It's like, I've had two fights on this international level. All, all these other fights have just been lead-ups to getting here, you know? I've, I've only been able to fight whoever they've given me. You know, if it was up to me, I would have been fighting for world titles a long time ago. But unfortunately, you don't get what you want. You you got to earn your way there. So, 
I was just waiting patiently for the opportunity for someone like Bradis to, to give me that shot. And and that's what happens. I, I won the belt and now I, I'm going to continue to keep winning the belts. Why do you think that you haven't been afforded that opportunity earlier on in your career? It's just boxing, you know, it's just the way it works, I guess. Um, you know, we, we, we've had a, a lot of setbacks with a lot of injuries and a lot of surgeries. Um, you know, even even with the Braders build up, you know, he we, that got postponed like three times. You know, it, I'm, but I'm used to it. it it's it's what happens. Um, but who cares? You know, that, that's all in the past now. You know, who cares what they used to think or who used to be on top? I'm here now, and and this is like I said, this is what I've been waiting for. So, you know, I, I just can't wait to fight for another belt. Jai, it's so funny because I really feel like I'm talking to a different person from the person that I met on on after the press conference because obviously you've had time to decompress, etc. But I really feel like that positivity just emanating from you, um, which is so it's so great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you did after the fight to relax? Um, <laughs> uh, we. Well, I had took my family over to London to watch the fight. Um, you know, my family, first time they've travelled, first time my mum's been on a plane, so it was Aww. pretty special to take her over, yeah. And then uh, we went to Paris, um, and then we went and had a bit of fun in Amsterdam after that. <laughs> so um, it was a memorable trip. Um, you know, it was good. It was good to tick it, tick it off. I've always wanted to sort of be able to, take my family overseas, take my mum overseas and stuff like that. You know, that that was another victory on its own. So, you know, I'll remember that for the rest of my life. But, um, you know, playtime's over. <laughs> I'm just ready to get back into the gym and, and get back in the ring. You know, I, I earned that little break. You know, that's what we do. We, we earn our break. We earn our fun. And now I'm ready to get back into work. That must have been such a such a beautiful moment to be able to obviously give your family that um and really a, just a testament to your hard work I think um in terms of you know you come from a boxing family I think it's on both sides right both your mum and dad yeah um my, not my mum but my mum's father and her brothers so obviously it's in your DNA it's just something that's like part of your genetic makeup almost do you think that Boxing is sort of not all you know, but just like the the one thing that you've always had in mind. Uh definitely. Um, you know, that's that's like when I talk about these these world title fights and these these stadium fights and stuff, you know, like I didn't stumble across the sport and then all of a sudden, no, oh, you know, I like this sport, you know, I was I was born and raised in this sport, you know, so I knew these fights were coming my whole life. So that's when I talk about relief. You know, it, it was from a very young age that I, I was always, I want to win a world title. I want to win a world title. So it's it's a, it's a relief being in those change rooms to me. It's it's finally I'm here, you know. So I'm just, and, I, and, and I'm excited to just see what's next, you know, so. You were boxing since you were eight years old, if I'm not mistaken. I had my first fight at eight years old, yeah. And you're now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're now 23, I know, with 18 KOs? Uh, yes. What do you think eight-year-old Jai Opataya would be thinking, seeing, how old are you now? 28. 20 years. 20 years, right? Yeah. What do you think eight-year-old you would be saying to 28-year-old you? I don't know. What, what would I say to myself at eight years old? Oh, I don't know, man. It's like, it, it's taken a long time to get to where I am today, especially mentally, you know, like, I, I remember being young, being scared to go in the ring, you know, like, fully hitting myself, you know, like, I used to even say, my dad was my coach, I used to be like, oh, man, I, I don't want to go out, like, you know what I mean? Like, full, I almost backed out, you know what I mean? And he kept pushing me, mate, so... Just pushing yourself to those uncomfortable situations, you know, it's really sort of, and now I just do it with everything in life, so. That's that's beautiful, that's beautiful. Jai, I will let you go, because I know that you've probably still got a bit of jet lag hanging over you. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. 
I really, really appreciate it. And we're so, so excited to see what the future holds for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support. No problem. No problem at all.